Okay, good afternoon. Welcome back to Eastman's Engineering. So this video is funny because I have recorded in the past a video on helping with 214 uh, using my previous uh, year's workspace. But when I recorded it, I didn't have any narration uh, that was picking up either because I didn't have my microphone plugged in or I had accidentally deselected it or whatever the case may be. But you hear me now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this video and I'm going to narrate over it and then uh, we'll talk about how to do the first parts of 214 in, uh, in the PLTW CSP curriculum. So let's play this video and we'll kind of go with what we have. All right, and maximize it as well. We can work with this. Okay, so in 214, what you're doing is you're starting off by creating a sort of web server and a web space. So this video is going to kind of cover the first few steps that you have to do for this. So when you get to number five, which, which does in the new curriculum does come after uh, instructions on how to share your workspace with, a, with somebody else, uh, what you're going to do here is you're going to be creating a new file. And the way you do that is by going up to the bash terminal where there's a circle plus sign, and you would select, and this I'm, I'm going to demonstrate right here, you would select from this uh, spot starting a new file, and you can select what type of file that you'd be creating from that as well. So at some point, my mouse cursor is going to go over to that plus and back and show you new file. Uh, we're going to create a document. We're going to create a web page. It's going to be in hypertext markup language or HTML, which is what that stands for. Uh, it's basic language for web content. You can avoid publishing content if you prefer. To keep content unpublished, just don't start the Apache server on Cloud9. So, um, random aside, some uh, student had asked me like they wanted to check their web address and see if that worked. But the reason it didn't work was because they don't have the Apache server running. And I mentioned that in order to get your web space to work so other people can access it, you have to start your own Apache server on the virtual machine. And we'll go over how to do that in due time. So anyway, at some point, there we go. We're going to go to the plus and we're going to go to new file. And then it starts a new text file. So all we have to do here, we're going to expand the window just so we can kind of edit it. We're just going to have to copy and paste some code that's already given to us. So it's not like we have to make up any HTML. It's not like we have to do any additional work. We just got to go back to the assignment and we're just going to type and paste or copy and paste into the editor. So you'll have text like this in the assignment. You'll notice also that this is a slightly different page format because this is what PLTW used to use. Um, so we can copy that in and we just paste it in. And there we've got a file. We've got some HTML code. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to save this. And it gives us some directions on what we have to do and where we have to save it. Kind of important you follow that, though, because you'll notice that we have directory trees in here. These, uh, these files do have to be saved in the correct folder in order for them to work as intended. So we are going to be creating some HTML files, very easy HTML files uh, in this assignment. And we have to make sure we put them all in the right folder. So this particular file has to be, has to be put into the 214 folder. So we're going to go over to our... Um, file menu at some point, and here again we're not quite in sync here, uh, we're going to take that, put it into the 214 folder, and we're going to name it index.html. So we're going to take this file, call it currently called untitled1. If I try to do that, we don't want to do that yet, we want to save it first. So we go to file, and we go to save, and then we're going to select the 214 folder and make sure we call it index.html. So see how it works very similar to a computer, right? Index.html, we save it in that folder. And then if I go and refresh that folder, I have to refresh that folder. Let's see if he, let's see if he does it. No. What happened there? That's weird, huh? It didn't name, at least when I did it at the time, it renamed it something else. Okay, so we were just renamed it on there. So we can do that too. We can always just click a file. It, just, it works very similar to a regular machine. Okay, so now uh, we're not published, even though it says you're published, anyone in the world can now see your work. That's not necessarily true. Like I said, you have to run a server in order for that to be, that to be possible. Um, professional developers do not develop on a live site. They work on a private site and then publish it once work is complete. To view an unpub unpublished client-side web page, uh, although as though it had been published, there's two options. Number one, you can save the file onto your computer and then use a text editor or notepad or a browser even to look at the web content and see how it shows up in the web browser. Or you can upload your file like we have done here to a, to a uh, virtual Apache server. 
uh, preview feature and then allowed, or sorry, using the Cloud9 preview feature that allows us to mimic what a browser would do without actually having to run a server that is publicly available. So we can just basically preview the file and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. So we're going to go over to the file and we're going to right click it and then you'll notice that in the fourth, the fourth option there is the preview option. So we click that and then it will take that, there, it'll take that, that, uh, address and it will publish what it would look like in a browser. Now that makes sense because this code, very, very straightforward. There's a meta tag, there's one thing in the body and that's it. And we can also just open it up and we're using a browser, but we also could view it as raw content, but we're going to keep it as a browser for now. So we can see that's the HTML, what it would look like and that's how to get a preview for that. So see, nice and easy. All right. I also can change the text as I can see here. I can make this so it's easy and fun and cool. And if I save this file, and then preview it again, you should see that change pop up and there it is, right? So it's not like it updates live. You do have to kind of refresh that update if, uh, if you want it to work out properly. Okay, so that's sort of that first uh, HTML. I also can, oh, there's one other thing I'm doing here is I'm changing the text size by changing from heading one to heading four. And so if I preview the file here, you'll see the text is now a little smaller. There's, I believe there's six different headings. You can do H1 through H6 on there. So a couple of things that you can do with that. Okay, now we're going to see a different uh, file and we're gonna call this ICE.HTML. So the tags you use in HTML provide limited stylistic functionality. We're gonna copy the following HTML. We're gonna make a new Cloud9 file, very similar to what we just did. And we're just gonna take this file and, pot and paste it into there. Then we're going to look at uh, what, what happens when you observe that file as a web page, okay? So we're gonna, and at the same time, we're gonna use and figure out what all those mean, and we'll talk about that in just a second. After that, we're going to see that there's a specific tree diagram that kind of covers how certain items would show up on, the, on there, and you can see that it kind of works in a tree. It's very similar to the way Python indents files, HTML is in that regard. So it makes sense that we just have to um, interpret it in, as such as well. So when we do heads, we have tags that we use do in the head of, the, of there. We have tags we do in the body. There's tags that do that we have to use in the table. And then there's TR tags, TD tags, and so forth. So it, it's very systematic in that regard and hierarchical. Hierarch, hierarchical. Okay, so at some point, I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, make this file and then we're going to talk about uh, cascading style sheets or CSS. <coughs> Okay, so we're back now to the same spot. Now, we're, we're kind of at this part of the video, we're really kind of looking over how to do some basic tasks. So here, we're not showing how we would save that new file. We are talking a little bit about what these tags mean. And again, these tags are kind of a, just a tree structure with, uh, with how HTML works on that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to got to continue on and see what we're going to do with that page. So once we make that page and you paste it in and you can preview it the same way that you made with the index file, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add an image to the page. Okay. So right here you can see that we've got all the flavors on here and it will show up as a table and these are table tags. These TR and TDs uh, basically are showing different rows and divisions of the table. So you can get all that information and you'll see what that preview looks like when you check it out on your own. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and grab an image and we're going to throw a, an image of cookies onto here, right? Because I think it's talking about some cookies and things. We're going to save the file as cookies.jpg. So we're going to go ahead and go to a browser tab at some point. It's coming. Yeah, mouse is heading that way. Okay, now we're going to a new tab and we're going to go to Google, right? Okay, and then on Google, we're going to type in cookies. Right, or something, right? Chocolate, ooh, we're getting specific. Chocolate chip cookies, right? So we go to images and there's some images from some chocolate chip cookies and those all look pretty appetizing. If you're watching this before lunch, I apologize. Uh, if you really like chocolate chip cookies and you really want one right now, I also apologize for that. So we're gonna find an image, chocolate chip cookies. We'll say, but that one looks good. We're gonna save that image and we're gonna call it cookies and cookies.jpg is now saved and onto our local, local file. Now, we want to add that into the 214 file so we can use it. So what we do here is we right click the file folder and uh, or click the file folder and we're going to upload local files. We do that from the file menu. So we don't have to necessarily click the uh, file folder, but actually I, I take that back. Yes, we do because we want that to show up in there. So I'm going to go ahead, go back to my 
file folder and we're going to do cookies.jpg and there it is, right? And you throw it in there as well. And alternatively, if you have the file uh, browser window open, you can always drag and drop them into those, that window as well to upload them the same way. All right, so cookies.jpg is now in that directory. And from there, we now have the possibility to uh, add that into a web page and to add and, and, and to the web page that we are creating from here. So from there, I would take that and I would add that line, as you can see and see the image src equals cookies.jpg. That line can get added into the web page at the desired location, and then that would create that image and put that image onto the body or into the body of the web, of the web page. So if you want it to show up before some text, you can put that that tag before the text, and if you want to show up after the text, you just put it after the text. All right, so we've got this code. If I want the cookie to show up, like I said, if I want the cookie to show up before or after, I just actually what I just said is just now being said uh, in the old narration that doesn't exist anymore. All right, so now we're talking about we're kind of talking about the different tags and the different sections of the web page. There's the head section, and here's the items that are in the head section. There's the title of the page, ice cream for ice cream, right? And then slash head that closes that tag. So think of it as a section of the HTML page. The head section has all of our meta information. It also has the title that shows up on the top of the window when we uh, open up the page in our browser. Then the body is where all of the information that's on the actual web page would go. So in this case now, this is all information that would go into a table. So the header for that table, or the header that's for, yeah, the header above that table is the most popular ice cream flavors. And then notice that I've opened a table tag, and then I've got the table heading, table row, and then the t all those different breaks and all the in to show what that table is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, be adding that image. I would add that image in. And then from there, I would have to kind of diagnose why that doesn't quite work. Okay. Now, if I, if I put the location and I haven't placed the correct location for that, uh, for where that HTML actually is. So for example, if I put the cookies, cookies image in a different folder, just maybe I have like a, spe a special images folder or a, uh, or a different folder on my machine where I keep them, that is not necessarily in the same folder as where I have the, uh, where I ha where I have the web page, then I can definitely just um, reference that either by relative or absolute path. So if you want the uh, so if you want to use something that's that's from the folder, you can basically type a relative path, but you also can type an absolute path. So that one there will always work because no matter where you put that file, if you use the absolute path, then you can move that HTML file wherever you want. But if you move the HTML file and you're using a relative path, you have to also move the directories that you would you would be associating that with in order for that to work. Now, one more thing you're going to do, and this, as you can see, the video is, is uh, coming to a close within, this one here is supposed to be all the way to the end here. Um, this uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to be pasting in the uh, request to use a style sheet, a CSS, cascading style sheet. And what that basically does is it formats your web page to look like something else. Okay, So that's, that right there is a preview of what that was, what that was going to look like. And the last item on here that you're basically doing, the last items, I should say, that you're doing is investigating different controls and how to get hyperlinks or uh, flow into your site. So the rest of the, the rest of the assignment is kind of an overview of those different tasks, but obviously the hard stuff is what this video uh, kind of covers. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to uh, close off this video because I'm, I'm kind of just now rambling on with the last parts here about what you have to do, uh, and that's that. So I hope that uh, this video helps you, and if you have additional questions or if this produced more questions, I please would hope that you would ask them in the comment section, or if you are a student of mine, that you would send me a message, or, or both. That would also work as well. So hope that you, uh, I hope you found this video helpful. hope that you subscribe to Usims Engineering, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.